What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, shrinksandsneakers.com. So I wanna thank everybody who's liked and subscribed to this channel, it's been quite amazing. I'm super excited that you guys are getting some value from the content that we're creating, and we're gonna keep working hard to bring you bigger and better content in the future. But for now, I wanna talk about a different topic. I actually wanna switch gears completely, because I've been talking mostly about psychopharmacology to you guys over the course of the last few months, and I'm gonna change over to neuromodulatory interventions. Specifically, in this one, I'm going to talk about transcranial direct current stimulation in regards to its treatment for depression. So let's see what the research says, and let's go over a recent meta-analysis to help us better understand how all that data works together and what it tells us about this treatment for depression. So I think one of the places I need to start for you guys is what do I mean when I say neuromodulatory intervention? It sounds really complicated and very complex, and in many ways it is. But what I basically mean by that is that we're altering nerve activity or neuronal activity through targeted delivery of a stimulus. That stimulus can be something like electrical stimulation in the case of transcranial direct current stimulation. So we're altering nerve activity through the delivery of this electrical stimulus. Now, I wanna flash the device up on the screen here for a minute because I want you guys to know a little bit about what it looks like and what it consists of. So if you were to get one of these devices, you would get a headband, and that headband would be attached to two electrodes, and it would be those two electrodes that actually deliver the electrical current or a weak electrical current across the brain. So a pretty simple design. Okay, so transcranial direct current stimulation is gaining popularity in the United States, and it's doing so for three specific reasons. The first one is the relative cheap cost of the device. So you, once you purchase this device, you own it, and you can use it as much and as often as you want to, and it's a one-time cost, whereas things like expensive medications can be a monthly cost, or if you're in expensive type of psychotherapy, like psychoanalysis, or a different type of neuromodulation, say something like uh, TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, it can be quite costly over time. So this device costs around $500, give or take, depending on the company and the brand you go with. And the second point I wanna make here is that there's a limited side effect profile. And you might be asking, well, Dr. Rossi, what are those side effects? What are the things I have to watch out for? Well, it's good that you're asking that because you always wanna know what are the, what are the pros or cons or risks and benefits of any type of treatment. So the side effects are relatively benign because they're limited to things like redness at the site of the electrodes, some tingling or numbness at the site where the electrodes are placed, and the other two are, are really more benign and, less, and rare side effects, but they can still occur, and that would be things like headache or fatigue after treatment. So those are the main side effects, a lot different than the number of side effects we list out with a medication, or sometimes some of those side effects you can list out with other neuromodulatory interventions. The, the last point, the third point and final point I want to make is that you can self-administer this. So again, once you make the investment of owning the device, you now have the device in your possession and you can use it as much and as often as you want to, which is convenient, and you can do it from home. You don't have to come into the office to receive, say, TMS. You don't have to come into the office to receive psychotherapy. Um, you can do this all from your home. So that's very nice and convenient. So after hearing all of this information, you might be saying to yourself, well, why aren't we just offering this all the time? How come this isn't mainstream? How come I've maybe never even heard of this device before? And there are some good reasons behind that. One of those reasons is that there's been mixed data. And when I say mixed data, I mean some studies have said there's positive effect to using this treatment. Other studies have not revealed that same positive effect for treating depression. So mixed data. The other thing that's really limited us in, the, in this area is that the studies are small and they have a low number of patients or people enrolled in them. So when you have small sample sizes, often you're not able to determine whether or not there is a true effect with the treatment or not. So there's a lot of limitations that are going on here. Now, one way we can potentially get around that is what the authors of this study that I'm going to flash on the screen here for you guys did. And they did what's called a meta-analysis. So what they did was they pulled together all of that data from 23 randomized control trials and 1,092 patients, and they looked at it and compared it 
with the goal of calculating an effect size. So the primary outcome measure here was effect size. And you can think of effect size as how much does this intervention correlate with the actual benefit, right? Does this actually treat depression? Is this actually effective? So the effect size was what they were going for. And they broke it down even further where they looked at response rates as well as remission rates for depression scores. So response rates being a significant reduction in depressive symptoms and of course remission being full remission of all depressive symptoms. So what they found in the transcranial direct current stimulation group, they found an effect size of 0.46, which is known as a moderate effect size. This falls into the moderate effect size. And if you compare that to antidepressants, which are around 0.3 or so, it's a little bit better than your traditional medication. Now, what about those response and remission rates? So the response rates for the group receiving the treatment was 33.3%, compared to the sham group, which was receiving something that was similar, but actually wasn't the treatment, it just seemed like it was, that was 15.56%. So essentially the placebo group. And the number needed to treat was six. So for every six patients you treat it, one would benefit from this treatment. Now the remission rates were a little bit lower, as you might expect, because remission is harder to achieve than response. So the remission rates for the treatment group were 19.12% versus 9.78%. And of course, the number needed to treat there was higher. So it takes more, you have to treat more patients to get one patient to have remission. With that said, I'm going to kind of wrap it there. And I'm going to say that transcranial direct current stimulation looks like a promising treatment for the future, but we need large randomized controlled trials to confirm the results that we already have. So we have some data to support it. We say like, yes, it looks effective, but we want those large randomized controlled trials to really point to really tell us whether or not this is going to be an effective treatment to offer our patients on a regular basis. For now, we can I can see this in a couple places. I can see this as an option for a patient who doesn't want to use psychopharmacology. So somebody who isn't interested in a medication, they could go they could go ahead and purchase one of these devices and use this device. And it also might fit in for people who don't tolerate medication for one reason or another, or who don't respond to it. Although I don't think this is an appropriate treatment for somebody with so-called treatment resistant depression necessarily, but it is a tool in our toolbox. And I always believe we should keep all of our tools available to us at all times because you never know what will help somebody. So I'm going to hold it there. If you guys have questions or comments, please drop them below and please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me to keep growing.